WSL, absolutely massive weekend at the top of the table. They have their first sellout crowd. They're here for us. So we're going to entertain them, showing them what the difference is between Chelsea and Arsenal. We're not here to compete, we're here to win. Arsenal against Chelsea is what promises to be the biggest game of the season. Arsenal will be sitting pretty at the top of the table with 33 points and Chelsea are on 29 points. It must be said that Arsenal have been in scintillating form since October. A tough task this afternoon for Chelsea. Sam Kerr searching for her first goal in the Super League in front of the 4,000 fans. I came here to challenge myself and that's exactly what I'm doing. My first few weeks have been tough. She's on some pressure now. You can hear how much everyone has been hyping her and it's probably not the easiest situation when you come to a new club and, uh, <laughs> yeah. So sometimes we're new players but we're on different pages, but we've got to get them onto our page as quickly as possible. I would have loved to have just come and slid into the team quietly. I would hate to be Sam. If she isn't the best of the best throughout the season, then, you know, she's going to get a lot of scrutiny for that. I guess now it's just about me kind of putting the outside noise behind me. Underway, tense atmosphere here at Meadow Park. The break might be on for Arsenal. Ez has got to deal with this. Come on, Ez! Come on, Ez! Come on, Ez! Good, Maka. Secure it. Chelsea clear away. Get it out, though. Good, Guru. Got to keep travelling. He's got to keep travelling. Zinsberger oh. rising to catch that one ahead of Kerr. Kerr was on side. Guru drive. Another good delivery into the area. And England now looking to feed Kerr. Go on in, Sam. Travel, go yourself, 1v1. Keep the ball. Cuts back looking for support. Ah. It was the wrong pass. Stay high, Split! Chelsea coming forward with England. Oh, put it in. Quick feet, chance to shoot. Curling Evans! Oh, what a strike that is! It's Zinsberger up into the top corner to break the deadlock here. Beth England with a fabulous strike on the big occasion to give Chelsea the lead here at Arsenal. Goal of the season for me. Chelsea making the most of their early pressure with a goal, causing all sorts of problems for the league leaders at the moment. Another DC cross. Go on, Beth. Oh, my God. Oh. Another delivery. Sammy. Well, the champions have it all to do now. Just 13 minutes gone, already two down. That's her off the mark. That's the oh. monkey off her back and all. Wow, what did we eat for breakfast? Fucking hell. Now Cuthbert spins into trouble, but does well to win the free kick. What can Chelsea conjure up here? Secure it, secure it. They struggled Arsenal to cope with. The cross is coming into the penalty area in this game. What a goal! What a strike! Fantastic volley from Sophie Ingle. Wow! 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 Chelsea wow. are 3 0 ahead against the champions. Oh, wow. No glowing. Keep everybody focused. Stick to task. Stuart, let them hear you for a little bit. Hey. Stay switched on, stay focused! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Blue shirts swarming around the ball every time they've got it. Arsenal 3-0 down. Kerr, good first touch. G, chance for the delivery into the penalty area! They found goal number four. Guru Wrighton in the right place to glance the header beyond Zinsberger and into the corner. Would you believe it? Top of the table, Arsenal are four down to Chelsea. Good job well done. 
for Emma Hayes. Our crossing has been unreal. And there goes the final whistle. It's a big twist in the title race. A perfect performance from Chelsea. What a game. I'm not gloating. Scoring at Arsenal is the best feeling. It's just a massive weight off my shoulders. They are also excited for me, and, and that's the best part for me. That's like my moment to have with the team and them to really accept me in. I think that's what's different about the women's game to the men's. I think that in the men's game, you have to play well to belong, and in the women's game, you have to belong to play well. Arsenal have been blinded by the light and the lightning feet of four different strikers. First goal in WSL for Sam Kerr, but what a performance. I looked at my watch and 22 minutes ago and we were 3-0 up and I thought this is a strange situation. And everybody was outstanding. Well, as an advert for women's football, it was absolutely fabulous. Chelsea were phenomenal. They are absolutely on one. How good were we in the first 20 minutes? I keep saying it's how I want to win Europe. How are we feeling? I feel fucking great. <laughs> how you doing, Mummy? Hi. Yeah, good, we won. perform an extra time, you have to train extra time. So. Yeah. The moment you win a game, you will have immediately to turn the button and to think how are we going to win the next game. Winning is winning every single thing, every single moment, seven days in the week, 52 weeks in the year. Last chance. That means being the best version of yourself, but also in the team to contribute to the, to the success of the team. No! No! I thought they were terrible today. I thought we were complacent. And Kaz didn't think it was good enough at all. But I'll pick that up. They're all over the place. It doesn't help when they've not looked and they don't know what they're doing. I'm not giving you multiple chances. Let's go, switch on, come on! We're brain dead. <laughs> oh, are they going to get it from me today? Yeah, I need to make sure Ramona's in the right space. I've got individual meetings this afternoon, so maybe some of that will come out. So why does no other player have an issue with time other than you, Ramona? Mm. I think rather than me feed back to you, I think I should let you start the conversation and then I think we go from there. Um, obviously, I was disappointed to not start the game against Arsenal and that was decided before I was aware of my hamstring. Um, thing is, I've been asking quite a lot of times now that if I'm not starting, someone needs to talk to me and if you want me to come on and change the game, then just tell me something positive that makes me feel better and get my confidence back up. How are you coping with not playing? 
Um, I've kind of accepted it, that I can only do what I can do, and it's up to you guys to make the decision whether you want me to play or not. I have to say, I will never get used to that. I will never, ever be okay with sitting on the bench. You know, those things happen, Ramona. I think with regards to being disappointed to start with Arsenal, I don't expect you to be happy that you are a sub, and far from it. Never undervalue your role in training sessions. You've done everything that's asked of you, and I think you've done it coming out with, you know, shining colours, to be honest. Thanks. We're at the business end of the season and scoring, assisting. I mean, this is not a conversation we haven't already had. I still feel for your qualities there should be more assists, more goals, more creation. Your mentality towards controlling the controllables to make you the best version of you is all you can do. Yeah. So many strikers, top strikers in the world, have been in that position where you are now not scoring because of 1001 reasons, but at one moment they start scoring again and they go like a TGV in totally the other direction. Show every single day why you have to play every single game. And don't give one millimeter. And if you do that consistent, then you have a reason to say, hey, why I'm not playing? I am doing fucking everything to play, every single detail. Okay, then totally different conversation. Thanks for being a good team player and thanks for valuing the importance of doing your job, especially when no one's watching. It makes the games that are playing as well even more special because it reminds you that's, that's, that's what you're fighting for. I fucking wouldn't mind hearing that every week for most people. Do you want to say something or to ask something? No. Don't derail right now. Stay on the track. Raise the bar tomorrow, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ramona. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to drive the bus. You gotta get on it, or you gotta get off it. I'll always listen, but sometimes just get on the fucking bus. Although we had prior to Christmas the sort of conversation, are you gonna go alone? Are you gonna say, yeah? I'm glad you haven't. I'm glad I haven't. I know. <laughs> if you want to get to the end of February and see where we are, yeah, we'll have a catch up and a cup of tea then. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Copy. Thanks. It's a great squad piece to keep around. Sure, for me, it's one hundred percent. Yeah. I don't want to get too excited about what she was saying, but it's nice to hear those things and it does put something in your mind. Like, oh, well, if I stick it out another couple of years, what, what could happen? They've obviously seen that I'm improving, which makes me feel a lot better about myself. It's not like we're saying, we don't, no. need, we don't need you, don't want you anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, she's a difficult one. Where would she go if she did? Anywhere but I would imagine, anywhere to take Arsenal and sit out the equation and then anywhere else in yeah. the league. Yeah, agreed. The last few months, I've really started to believe that I am important in this team, whether I play or not. So I'm happy. I can drive you and Magda up the top now. Oh, that's, wow. that's, that's the yeah. cue, okay. isn't it? Of yeah. hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. Then, nice Joe, you need to give that to Magda. Yeah. You need to say, Magda, come on. Frank, we'll put you that side. Will that be it, Magda? You come over here. Yeah, everyone from, from three are up in the, at the men's building at the minute and obviously waiting um, for, for Emma and Magda. 
so I've just come down just to try and hurry her along. But um, as you can see, Magda's picked today to uh, do some extra training, so I think we're going to be rocking up a little bit late. You look lovely. No, come on. Quick, quick, come on. Yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I know that all the attention we can get at this point is good attention. Thank you. Thanks for that. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that interview. I'm, oh, why? But then I'm like, okay, Magda, this is really, really important that you do this to get the value of women's football up. Just a bit stressed because I've just trained and it's been raining and my hair is all messed up. You look beautiful. Mm. Two, three years ago, there's no way that the, the men's club manager and, and captain would be doing those type of things with, with the women's team. The profile of the women's game has been raised and as a consequence of that, players suddenly become superstars. They see personal benefits. They themselves become marketable. Oh my God, <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> my sponsors, um... Nike is my first one. Then I'm also with Mastercard, Coca-Cola. I do stuff with Powerade in Australia. Mate, Foxtel, PTP. <laughs> I um, shouldn't tell you guys this because the girls will give me crap about this. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, I feel very blessed and very lucky to be able to work at a big brand. Football is obviously my passion, but it's also the business. Wow. Hello. Hi, sorry. Ramona, hi. Nice to meet you, Ramona. Hi. I've got lots of sponsors. We obviously need to play football need to try and keep everyone happy. Obviously, we're not earning millions as the men do, so getting paid through sponsors, that obviously helps. Was your sporty as a child? Is it something what you do? Always play football. Have you? Yeah, wow. It's not all about the blokes. No, not anymore. Not anymore. I'm like 28, so I have to think about the future. Rhonda, where do you are about there? Perfect, perfect. Alright. We should have that before every game. <laughs> Someone doing your point out. Can imagine. Can you imagine. <laughs> I really would say that I'm quite lucky with what I'm doing. I save quite a lot of money, but I also know how fast it can be over. Okay. Cool. Let's try some here. In women's football now, there's a certain number of players who can earn this much, and then there's a certain number of players who are just about scraping a living on a very, very basic wage. Oh my God, my boot's a mess. But most of them aren't making the sort of money that's going to provide for them in 10 or 15, 20 years. I just want them to invest sensibly in their lives, not in bloody cars. Put it in an ISA. Put it in your pension. I advise all my players to have a backup plan. What if they get injured? What if the league goes bust? Beth, just a quick question. So basically, we're doing Conti Cup Media next week and Football Focus. I've asked to speak to you specifically. It'll be Wednesday, and I know you've got a uni, I know. I'm just studying a law degree at the minute. It's just making sure you've got more than one option. I just need to let them know whether you can do it or not. If I didn't play football, my dream is to be a lawyer. I can't do my yeah. assignment Thursday because it's got to be done by midday Thursday, which I'd be here. Yeah. Honestly, why I'm doing uni is <laughs> Thank you. I don't think I'm ever going to find something else that I have such a big passion for that I have for football. That's probably the biggest, biggest challenge because you know at one stage you're going to give your biggest passion up that you had since you were little. And I don't know if you can prepare for this really well. 
I'm not sure if you can prepare for it at all. So confusing at the top, I'm just trying to work it all out. So, Manchester City and Arsenal are joint leaders, but Chelsea are just a point behind, so they're right in the mix too. On paper, we should win, but you never can tell with these derbies. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous about today. Getting further and further towards this corner. Yeah. We know we can play Arsenal's and Man City's. Home to West Ham, we still have to make sure that we are completely switched on. On the bench will be Jess, Diana, Rami, Jamie Lee, Bergie, Charlotte. Mona Beckham pretty much has been on the bench all of this season. I don't think she seems to have dropped out of form that much when other people perhaps could potentially have been dropped. I completely agree. She has added to the goal tally by setting people up. I think that can be quite upsetting as a player to know that you're putting everything you can to prove that you're good enough to be on that pitch and you know that you are and you're not being picked. But hopefully she comes on and she scores a goal and Emma picks her a bit more. Chelsea get us underway. They're looking to continue riding this unbeaten wave. Stuart, I feel like we're at a completely different level. Yes! We look so on it. Yes! How easy was this? You just wonder how many more they're going to score. Chelsea hungry for more. Erin Cuthbert! Oh, what a goal! I told her she'd get one today. Erin Cuthbert to deliver. Oh, and it's another one. Get in again. <laughs> Rami, you and Jess. And he's going to make way for Ramona Bachman. It's so hard to come in as a sub and just straight away get the pace of the game. And Bachman, through she goes, and Brosnan denies her. It's not even on, is it? How did I end up? Still, she has to wait for her first goal of the campaign. Everyone's been playing for 60, 70 minutes and have felt the game out got their second wind and then you're coming in and no matter how long you come in for as a sub, you're always tired. Oh, and she's so unfortunate. That would have been some goal. It's a different skill that not many people have. A race is on for Carter. Bachman in the centre. Bachman still. She's had a moment since she came off the bench. Jess shows some good aggression. Jess deserves all the credit in the world there. Go on, go on, Rami. Go on, go on, go yourself. Backman. Sporting cast arriving now. Carter being one of those. And yeah. Rafa! to save her for the 16 year old that's eight now brutal Chelsea they have ripped apart West Ham United West Ham did not play well at all they're letting eight goals <laughs> my god Chelsea could have scored more 
Emma Hayes has looked at that and thought, this game is that easy. I'm sending on a 16-year-old who's going to come on and score one of the easiest headers. Thanks, Mommy. Finally, yeah. I feel like I needed that. I've been struggling quite a lot. Yeah, I was hoping she is going to put me on quite early so I have some time to um, have an impact. Uh, obviously, I could have scored more goals than one. With Kerr being away, you've now got Ramona coming in and that's her first goal in, I don't know, it's, it's, I can't remember the last time she scored. I think hopefully now that will kick her on to, to score more goals for the rest of the season. Ramona should have started today. I would be frustrated if I was her coming on. I think it was like 70 minutes. I don't think that's a great time to come on. Is it possible for her and Kerr to play in the same side together? Everything's possible. It's possible for me and Kerr to play in the team together at this rate. If it carries on the way it's going, I can't see her being here next season, which is annoying. She's a fantastic player. What message do you think this sends out in the title race? More importantly, what message does it send out in my dressing room about not being comfortable? It doesn't matter who you are, to get in this team, you've got to produce performances every week. And that's the biggest message, is that no matter who we play, we can produce performances like that. And that's the one thing I want the group to be reminded of. As a striker, I think you're judged on how many goals or how many goals you can assist. You don't know how much that means. Now we've got to go after the next ones. At the end of the day, and even if someone doesn't watch the game, they look at the scorecard and see that you did or didn't score. People's minds are very easily made up. You're trained to play games, so you want to play games. Your market value goes up, other clubs are interested in you, like those are the things that come with playing, and that's the reality. We win 8 0. <coughs> oh. Last week when we played to Bristol, Emma put a thing out about how she wished she could have put me on because I deserved to be on the pitch. And we're 8 0 up and she still doesn't put me on. <sighs> yeah. Actions speak louder than words. That's all I can say. Now I'm going home. See my family. I'm the only ones that really care about me or how it feels at the moment. So, <clears throat> yeah. Britain has been lashed by heavy rain and gale-force winds that reached almost 100 miles an hour. It is left behind a trail of destruction. We've seen Storm Kira giving us 90 mile an hour winds, then Storm Dennis. Manchester United could not play host to Chelsea, even though Chelsea were halfway up the motorway by the sounds of it. But this happened last time we came to Everton, time kept getting being put back because the conditions weren't great. They'll have to be rescheduled. It's a shambles. It's the fans that pay money to stay overnight to get a minibus. And I think our fan supporters bus broke down as well on the way back. We've got games hauled off just a few hours before the start. You're disappointed? Yeah, <laughs> coming all this way. There's nothing we can do about it, no. It is frustrating for elite football, especially when the women's game is trying to build momentum. Whatever stadium the Premier League goes to, they know they're not going to have to focus on if the pitch is good enough or not. fixture list was decimated by Storm Dennis, but we're not going to let it stop us. Going into this huge match, Manchester City against Chelsea on Sunday, this is the showdown that everyone's been waiting for. The last two weeks has been challenging. So we've had two days off. We're building up to an important game at the weekend. Um, you know, getting on the grass, getting the players to move is, is massively important. And stress levels start getting high. They want to be outside, we want to be outside. We go on the 3G and start training at 11.30 or we wait for the boys to finish on phase two, but it will be at 12.30. There is nothing else we can do, we've just been informed. Maria, shall we see the
you, you don't like AstroTurf. But maybe we try and find somewhere. What do you want, Magda? Play of the players want. The grass pitch or Yeah, grass pitch. Okay, it's... just focus on the training session and as soon as we are ready... What do you uh, mean? Like, what are we doing now then? For an hour? Uh, just have to ask Harry how much you already have done. Because then we have to yeah. uh, adapt a little bit. You ideally don't want to be changing between surfaces, especially not in the run-up to what is essentially uh, one of the most important games of the season. We don't want to go to Astro, we don't really want to go indoors. And you know, you are at high risk of injury when you keep changing from surface to surface. It's added stress that they don't need. We will find a solution. We are now uh, deciding what pitch we will train. Hey, Jason. This one, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? OK. It's a little bit long, but... It is what it is. Yeah? I mean, players will prefer longer grass than 3G. Because of how good they are at their jobs, they can pick up on those minutiae that we wouldn't even think to consider. They're professionals, and they're really sensitive to any change. Just changing the pitch, because the other pitches are all under the water. Emma, it's Bart here. Now we have three days to prepare Man City, so we have to be sure that everything what can distract the players, we avoid so that the preparation does not disturb, because every game is a final for us. It's a pitch, it's got grass on it, it's got lines, it's got through gold. Perfectly will be. <laughs> Same again, down the middle or down this side, but with better quality. Whenever a big game comes up, they start stressing. But I don't want to be looking back at this period and think, oh, just because we're all a bit tetchy, we lose the next two games, which are our most important. Man City are really, really tough games. And if we can't roll our sleeves up, don't expect to come away with something. Ready? Try and get some of the fundamentals right within the squad. Tough business, huh? Well, I better not fuck it up then, but. Being picked to play a weekend is the real litmus test that you're rewarded for the work you're putting in. But you can only make little people happy at any one given time. But I've never ever come across a happy sub. But as players, we all want to be in that starting level. That's why we do this job. Oh, it's everything. You want to play, you want to be out there, you want to be feeling like you're influencing things. It's the worst feeling of not playing. You work so hard every single day of the week just to be sat on the bench. So that was the point. You want to do so much, but you cannot change things until you get onto the pitch. Whenever I'm on the bench, that is what I struggle with the most, the feeling of, uh, of being powerless. Pleasing them or giving them bullshit will never work. I've never found an easy solution to tell them they're not in the team. And when you're having to do that eight times to a player, it takes a lot away from me. And uh, I've often found this to be one of the more difficult areas of coaching. OK, on to the game for the weekend. Listen, we're going up there to win. We've never won up there. So there's no point me telling us that we're going in here uh, with anything else in mind. In terms of the prep today and the defending strategy, we'll do a piece of that, and I want us to be able to solve a little bit more in the creation phase. Normally, we get the starting lineup the day before or the day of the game. It's because Emma wants everyone to feel like they have the possibility to get into the team until the last minute. And for us, it's about recognising the right moments to do things, OK? If you don't know if you're going to play or not, then you will prepare as if you're going to play. 
those things are very important to keep the team going and to keep the team spirit high. So, we've really had a good look at where we can get at them, okay? Okay. 1.45, see you then, on the grass. I am like the most oblivious person in the world in the team meetings. But that meeting, I think I could kind of feel that something had happened. And that caught my attention. Um, so I was looking around the room like, what's just happened? I didn't know you said. Yeah. yeah, as I was saying. Anyway. We accidentally put the numbers of the starting line up on there. So players are seen as a technical mistake. I don't know if everyone picked it up. No, but it's, it's just like if you see that it's probably someone. when you're on the bench. Well, I was definitely see it. Yeah, I guess. you think of those things. I'd um, see. It. We'll just see if people talk about it downstairs yeah. or not. Obviously, the staff hadn't spoke to any of the players, so there was players that have been playing for the last four weeks that have just been dropped, and they found out via a PowerPoint, <laughs> which isn't the nicest thing. Like, you'd obviously prefer to be told to your face. It's, it's not great for morale. <laughs> Look, listen, is the, I'm not saying any, any of ZZ, but everybody just needs to stay the course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay the course, yeah. including the bench. No, oh, yeah. not time for egos now. Train well yeah, today. Mm -hmm. Train well. Now we've got two sessions to go. Those that are not starting are thinking, oh, I'm not starting, so does that happen? The confidence of all their elements, so I... Um, but that's, they have to be professional. They're paid to do that, and not paid to like everything. Listen, our execution's got to be better. We've got to start hitting the target. Get the balls into the bottom corners. I now have to pick up my assistant's sloppy work. Happens. Oh, yeah, it's put us in a predicament. It's a big game someday. But that's my point. Look at that. Mm. Been today. Quality's been It's shit. We just need to recover the mood a little. Time. Irregardless, irregardless of anything, we have to make sure that every single player is ready for the weekend. That's what my job is, to make sure that we're ready, 100%. Because you know what? Regardless of what anybody's seen on the screen upstairs, everything happens in football. So regardless of the mistake from the coaching staff, I want to make sure everybody's ready because you know what? I turn around and tell you and I think, God, are these players ready for the weekend? And if we're not ready for the weekend, and if you're in the starting lineup and you're not ready, well, someone else better be, okay? Let's go. Come on. I've been murdered today. Got to keep pushing, Mills. We've got to keep pushing. We mustn't drop off. For me, it's when I see people not tracking their players, I know. that's when I get It's completely f***. First thing you hear when you get to the team is, ah, you can't expect me to press and then get back. I'm like, I don't want to hear this. Me up. You know what? At the end of the day, it's hard for me because I, I f didn't even know that that was put up on the screen, and I'm the one who's going to suffer. <laughs> I suffer, right, as the manager, because everyone's like, f you. Five didn't seem that great. I don't know whether you guys pull the team in and say something about it. I just want to make sure the team don't become a problem, like players in the team. Uh, I'm not starting. We've seen it today. Did they explain why? No. Everyone's going to Manchester. There's three of us not in the squad. And if we stay here, 
when you've been working your ass off for four months and you just kind of get moved to the side without ever being spoke to. Um, it's quite frustrating. I've always been taught kind of by my parents that if you work hard for something, you, you get what you deserve and it doesn't seem to apply. The only people that have supported me have been the players and so I will be there for them and that's how I'm going to finish this period. How much time you will need to be ready? Um, I think the decision now has been made that I will leave Chelsea. As a captain, the biggest challenge is, is to manage the players, to manage the staff, to be that link between the players and the staff. I need to be the one to try to calm everyone down and to try to be the word of reason. But I have to accept that I can't make everyone happy. And uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, yeah, me and Minnie just had a chat yesterday. And we just want everyone to know that what happened in the meeting yesterday is not OK. And we've told the staff that. So it's on them, but it's also on us. We didn't show up yesterday. And we need to get better at that. Even putting all emotions aside, when we're on the pitch, we need to have quality sessions. And I know it's hard, I get it, but we all want to win on Sunday. So it's really important. Everyone helps each other, picks each other up, okay? I think team morale is the single most important thing to me. And when I was coming to this team, that's the one question that I continuously asked Emma. How does the team get along? How is the team? It's so important to winning. It's those one percenters that make the difference. I couldn't perform in a team that has poor morale and doesn't have cohesion. The level of commitment I expect from my players everything, nothing less. Focus on doing your job on the pitch. Oh, you can't lose ground at any moment. It's all going to come down to the key game between Chelsea and City. This is going to be an absolute stomper. Could be the defining weekend of this WSL season. Is it suddenly registering for everyone what's at stake now? I'm not going to mug myself off. It's all about the winning. I'm not going to give some f about the spirit and the team and the squad and all that because they're going to do that. You shouldn't need any extra incentive today. You know what's in front of them. You win, go top of the league, and take a massive step forward in the title race. They already know what's on the line today. I think they do. Surely they do. We're making mistakes. Dozens of sporting events have been postponed. It's my job to keep the team from derailing. It could be the only chance to actually lift a trophy for a very long time. I love the rivalry. We're going out there to get our hands on that f***ing trophy. We don't know when we're going to finish the season. The world's going to shut down.